Okay, so we've got a calculus of variations problem here, and this particular question is a variable endpoint problem. Now, the uh, endpoints of y are three. We don't know what they are, but we're given that our x values are from zero and one. That's our range of the integral here. So we've got our y primes and our y's inside the functional. So we, how we can find the value of y of x from that is what we're really interested in. So the Gatto differential here could take quite a bit of time, could be quite complicated. The easiest and the quickest route of that is going to be the Euler-Lagrange equation. So that is written as, so partial derivative of this functional with regards to y. And then we subtract from that the derivative with regards to x of the partial derivative of the functional with regards to y prime and then we set that to zero because when the derivative, uh, partial derivative and the derivative of the whole thing is set to zero that's what we're interested in to find these variable endpoints okay so first of all let's find the partial with regards to y so partial with regards to y so the y prime squared, that's not part of this, so that's disappeared. So we've got a y and a y prime. So the y prime acts as a constant multiple. So if we take the derivative of this, we're just going to be left with the y prime. Take the partial with regards to y, we end up with a 1. And the y prime here, we can disregard. So that's our first part of the Euler Lagrange. Now the second part will take the partial with regards to y prime. Okay, partial of this, bring the 2 out front, so then 2 over 2 gives us a 1, and the y prime squared just becomes y prime. So as we did in this one, the y prime is what we're trying to find the uh, partial of, so the y is now the constant multiple, so that's just going to leave us with the y. This we can disregard, we're only interested in y prime, and then this will then leave us with a 1. Okay, so now we need to take the total derivative with regards to this y prime. So now we take d dx of y prime plus y plus 1. So the derivative of y prime is just going to leave us with y double prime. Derivative of y is again y with the derivative, that's y prime, and the derivative of 1 is just going to disappear. So now we can ready to write this in this form. So f of y, so I'll just write here Euler-Lagrange equation just for that, f of y is y prime plus 1, and then subtract what we have here. So then we're left with y double prime plus y prime and set that to zero. Okay, so some simplification we can do here. We've got a y prime and a y prime here. This one is positive. Distribute the negative, this one's a negative. So these two will cancel out. And then we're left with 1 minus y double prime equals zero. I always like to bring my uh, highest order of my partials out to the front. So if I do that and multiply everything through by minus one, I'm going to get y double prime minus one equals zero. So that's our Euler-Lagrange equation. So I'm going to put that up here. So my Euler-Lagrange equation is y double prime minus one equals zero. Okay, so I'm going to take this off the board, pause the video, and you can keep that if you want to write that down. Okay, so now what we need to do now is find the homogeneous solution of this. So y prime minus 1 equals 0. Now this is a second order differential equation, so our homogeneous solution of this would be in the form of C1x plus C2. OK, so 
Okay, so now we need to find a particular solution. So let's write that down as a YP. So let's just bring this up to here. So Y double prime minus one equals zero. Now for a particular solution, we don't want a zero in here. So what we can do is we can bring the one across. So now we're left with Y double prime equals one. Okay, so now we can take, just integrate twice and then we can see what happens. So regards to x, integral regards to x. Now we don't need the constant multiples in here because we're going to be dealing with them with our homogeneous solution anyway. So the integral of one with regards to x, that just gives us x. Don't worry about the plus c. But then let's just integrate this side. We're going to have to y prime. And then if we integrate again with regards to x, so this will then give us our y that we want. And then the integral of x with regards to x, simple power rule is just x squared over 2. So that's now our particular solution. So that equals x squared over 2. Okay, now I'm going to take this off the board. Okay, so we've got our homogeneous and we've got our particular. So now what we've got, we've got y of x equals c1x plus c2 plus x squared over 2. Okay, so now we're ready to put in our values at x equals 0 and x equals 1 of our partial derivative with regards to y prime, which what we previously got was f of y prime. Now that equaled y prime plus y plus 1. And we want to know when that's stationary, so that's when it equals 0. Okay, now we've got our y of x here. So now we need to find our derivative of this. So y prime of x is c1 squared over 2 is just x. Okay. Now, as this is a variable endpoint problem, what we're interested in is when this functional is stationary. So what we want is f y prime when this is equal to zero. Now we're given that x equals zero and x equals one is our range of integration. So they're the points that we're interested in. So what we're looking for is f, the partial of f with regards to y prime, at the points where x equals 0 and x equals 1. So what we can do is plug in our values at these points for our partial of f and see what we can come up with when we plug in the values of x equals 0 and x equals 1. So previously worked out that f, partial of f with regards to y prime, that was y prime plus y plus 1. So now what we need to do is just plug in the values for these functions here at x equals 0 and x equals 1 and see if we can come up with something. So y prime at x equals 0. So x equals 0. Let's do that first. So y prime, c1 plus 0, just leaves us with c1. Our y at x equals 0, that disappears that will disappear and that leaves us with c2 and then plus one that equals zero so that's at x equals zero there so what about when x equals one so if x equals one we've got c1 plus one and our y so x equals one we're left with another c1 C2 again, and x equals 1 here, that's just going to give us a half. And don't forget our 1 here again, so we've got another 1, and that equals 0. Okay, so we can simplify this up a little bit, so the C2 can stay on its own, that's just a 1, but the C1 we've got two of them, so we can cross that one off put a 2 there 
Now the constant multiples, we've got a one, a half, and a one. So that's set to five over two. So two C1 plus C2 plus five over two equals zero. So let's just put that in a little bit. So two C1 plus C2 plus five over two equals zero. Okay, now we're interested in our arbitrary constant C1 and C2. Now, we've got, looks like here, we've got ourselves a good old fashioned simultaneous equation. So if we subtract this one from this one, or vice versa, we can get rid of the C2. So if I put a minus sign here, as our action we're gonna perform on these two. C1 minus two C1, that gives us minus C1. C2 minus C2, that disappears. And then one minus five over two gives us minus three over two. And that equals zero. So what does C1 have to be for minus three over two equals zero? Well, if C1 is minus three over two, two minuses make a plus, so three over two minus three over two equals zero. So we can say C1 equals minus three over two. So now we just plug in a minus three over two into this. So bring this down here. So minus three over two plus C2 plus one equals zero. Minus three over two plus one. So let's cancel that one out and just put that as minus a half. And then that cancels out. Then minus a half plus C2 equals zero. So what does C2 have to be? Well, C2 has to be positive one half. Okay, so now we're ready to write our function y of x using this information. So y of x equals c1x plus c2 plus x squared over 2. So c1 is minus 3 over 2. That's minus 3x over 2 plus c2. So that's plus a half. And then plus x squared over 2. And then that is our solution for y of x in this variable endpoint problem. Okay.